Well, here I am again on another garage adventure. But uh, as you can probably see, the bonnet is closed. I can't look at that engine again for a little while. I'm still waiting for that new turbo to come. And uh, for the time being, I'm moving on to other things. I've gutted the inside of the vehicle and I've begun with sound deadening. But it's looking pretty good and I've already opened and completed using one box and that's pretty much done the entire footwell, the centre part where the transmission is and the back of the vehicle including the rear arches. But that's really what we're going to do in this video. I'm going to go forward and going to start doing the other side and hopefully do the roof too. We'll see how much I've got left. But first I'm just going to show you the material I'm using. I think one bonus of this and, and if you know me on this channel is, is this is very shiny and uh, you know that that's that's a good thing isn't it shiny things shiny means good like a magpie i'm like a magpie but basically it isn't dynamat it's called silent coat and uh it's very inexpensive it's about two mil thick so it's not one of the thickest you can buy i think dynamat you can get in like 50 sorry five or eight mil thick basically but you can use it as you know like a heat shield as well and hopefully it will just quieten down the XJ a little bit. But I imagine I might have to use some foam and things in some areas just to keep that noise down a little bit more um, because this alone might not be enough. But, you know, we'll see. But let's go have a look at the vehicle. Whew, look at the shinies. Wow. I better be careful. The magpies are going to be all over this thing. But basically... This is what you're looking at. It looks a bit kind of weird in, in the passenger and the driver's footwell uh, because the story goes is when I bought this vehicle, it already had silent coat in it. In fact, it had it all along here in the footwells, not here. It had it here as well and, and not here. And it had it all along this center um, channel as well where the transmission and stuff and the drive line is. Um, I actually left it there and I've just doubled it up with, with my stuff. But I removed it all when I first bought the vehicle because I noticed there was a lot of corrosion. Corrosion to sort out on top of here. Uh, fortunately, the metal's still still great. But but you know it, I caught it really early on top of here. And the, and the problem was is that the silent coat was actually going over the top of these channels. And and I guess the guy who installed it had pushed it down as best he can in these water run channels here. He'd gone over certain seams and stuff just here because uh, you get water building up in this cross member here for the for the for the seat um, and the water couldn't actually find its way out through this front seam here which is a really important line that that you actually get water running out from so going forward this time i've left all these channels open with just the bed liner and there's actually holes here underneath this cross member and the water runs down there and it comes out of there and sometimes it builds up in here and it comes out of this seam at the side here and it wants to run down here and it builds up here. Now if you do a lot of water sort of plugging and stuff through mud and you get water in the vehicle, it might be a great idea to build your own drain plug here at the lowest point. I haven't, but it just gives me the ability to take away the um, the rugged ridge mat that I've got that's sat in here, look underneath and go, okay, I've got a lot of snow and water and it's all gonna be able to find its way out somewhere and I can basically mop it all out and maintain the vehicle. So I've done it this way in these areas because, you know, I'm very mindful about my previous experiences in corrosion. But if you take a look at the back, you can see I haven't really done that at the back because the back really doesn't see much water. And, and if you're unsure about getting a good seal here and here, just overlap it slightly on top of itself and, and it, will, it will seal on itself. But I've just done the, the wheel arches too. You know, the wells either side, you get a lot of noise out of those. And I intend to put some black foam over them eventually. And then a big plastic mat over this, like a big rug, rugged ridge mat that I've got. You can see I've stopped the uh, silent coat just here, mainly because I always am mopping water out of this bit here and this bit here, always. Uh, it just finds its way back. Like you go uphill and it's full of water here. And it just gets through these seams and stuff along here and it just ends up all building up at the back there and I'm always mopping it out. Um, you know, so, so I'd rather be mopping it out off of paint, like Raptor liner, like you've got here, than mopping it out off of the Dynamat, thinking, oh, maybe 
the dynamat's loosened in some area and, and basically the, the water's gone underneath that and it's and it's no trap. And it might just sound like I'm being super paranoid, but um you know it's just it's just the experience I had before with that product, with that particular product. Maybe you don't get it with some of the more expensive products, maybe a heat gun and really sort of heating that stuff up and melting it down onto the surface is gonna help and um you know it, it it probably will but you know what seam sealer sticks down really well to metal and paint and all of this stuff and rust still creeps under seam sealer you know i've still had to lift massive sheets of seam sealer and i've been like what the you know there's rust all along here and i never even knew it, it looked great it was painted but it was under that seam sealer just creeping along for years and yeah, now I've got to clean all that back and put new seam sealer down or or look there's a water water's getting under the seam sealer through there so I'm not going to put any seam sealer back there because I want the water just to find its way out and that's kind of my experience of, of this vehicle and the vehicle I had before is provided you let the water find its way out you generally don't have a problem it's when it gets trapped that it starts to just kind of make issues for you so that's my logic behind this without preaching too much to everyone out there you know you can do what the hell you want and you know i'm not saying this is the right way of doing it this could be completely crap but i've got to try it haven't i so um let's get the other chair out chair seat out and uh start with the other side old mcdonald and a farm and on that farm he had a jeep E -I -E -I and the turbo didn't fucking work. E -I -E -I right, so there are four bolts basically, four, well, three bolts and one nut holding the seats in. Um, the way I like to take the seats out, because you can scratch the, the heck out of the vehicle doing it, is make sure the rear door's closed, because if that's open, you'll probably drag the mounting point across the side of the door. I've done that before. I usually turn the seat like that and kind of just take it out like this. So the soft bit is now on the sill. You can kind of just walk the seat round. And then the camera's in the way because you're making a YouTube video. There we go. And then it comes out generally with, with zero problems. God, these things are flipping heavy, mind. No wonder this thing goes like two miles an hour. Because I haven't got a turbo. <laughs> Not bitter about it. Not bitter about it. All right, there we are, hey look. Must have been from one of those really good quality seat covers I bought off eBay. First. <laughs> Even though I've already got some of this silent coat just here, I am going to double layer it up like this and, um, and start laying it down like that. So yeah, let us begin. Peel off thy paper. And then stick it there, just like that. We use the rollinator. This does actually like completely change the texture of it, as you can see. I actually think it looks better, and uh, there'll be mats and stuff over it, so I don't really care what it looks like. I just want it to be, you know, stuck down really good. where these these bolts are because I've got to put in some new linkages soon and it replaces this entire kit really easy to cut this stuff actually as well with a pair of scissors just like that and you can use these bits for lots of other places it gets a bit addictive though this I mean you know you know me I, I like shiny things so this is kind of, this is pretty, uh, it's 
pretty intense, but pretty happy with the way it's turned out. I've, I've kind of got water runs in mind, as you can see. I've left little runs between seams and things. I haven't gone over seams because I had bad experience with that last time. So the water can, can run freely freely through the seams and, and find its way to the lowest point on those channels there where I can then mop it out. But obviously, you know, I'll have to see how that goes. But it's looking pretty good. I wasn't going to film this video because I just thought, wow, this video is going to be boring. It's just me sticking stuff down. That's kind of my... All right, calm down. Uh, that's kind of why I've uh, done most of it apart from the roof because, you know, you get the idea. Um, I mean, may maybe the stuff that I'm talking about with water, you know, might not be something that a lot of people chat about. I mean, I've watched a lot of sound dad dead deadening, deadening videos and, uh, you know, no one's really, really talked about that, about water and, and kind of leaving areas for water to run. But then I guess a lot of people are doing this in regular cars or classic cars and maybe not so much snowy, wet environments like mine where, you know, I've got to think about kind of it getting under the dynamat between seams and other such things, you know. Um, yeah, so I've got some interesting stuff coming up anyway on the channel. I've actually bought gears for the Jeep. Um, I went for it and, uh, you know, I've got gears. So I'm going to be re-gearing the truck uh, to 488 which you know has has its concerns obviously when you go to 488 the, the, the pinion gets much smaller uh, the diameter and thus will gets a lot weaker but I guess you know the counteraction of that is is you know the engine's not working so hard anymore um, your RPM ranges will kind of stabilize and you will probably find yourself having much better fuel economy. I used to get, when I used to drive to the Lake District, I used to get 37 miles per gallon out of this thing on 31s. Um, so now I'm on 35, so I get about 27, uh, which which is still rubbish, really, uh, for, for a vehicle like this, at this weight. So I'm hoping to get some fuel economy back, and then I'm probably gonna get rid of my BFG KM3s and go with something a bit more summer friendly um, and then I might just keep those as a set of summer t uh, winter tyres for getting them studded and, and stuff like that and you know basically getting along things that way but uh, yeah you know it's exciting stuff I mean I'm a bit nervous about re-gearing I've done it before and um, pulled it off successfully but I've also done it before and completely screwed up. Well, that's the inside kind of finished, really. But let's test a sheet on the roof. See what happens. Uh, I don't know where I'm going to do it. Maybe here. I think it recommends wearing gloves for this stuff, by the way, because of cuts and that. But it makes a big difference. Hello. Yeah, so it's it's looking good. You can see I'm overlapping it onto itself, just a mill or two, just to help with adhesion and also going over the edge here. The reason I'm doing that is, is I will run foam from here all the way around on, on the roof, like black foam, maybe it's sort of five mil thick um, across all of it. And it'll go over this as well. And it'll be clamped down by this here. So you won't see this, but I just want to bridge that gap really just to, um, you know, just to tidy things up a bit, really, and have something to glue to, to make it look nice. But, um, yeah, there we go. Just going to crack on with it. It's pretty, pretty easy. I mean, I don't know what that Dynamat stuff's like. Probably a lot better than this, actually. But, but this stuff seems, seems pretty good, really. Seems okay. It's, it's sticking all right. I mean, obviously, I'm working on a roof, so it's going to want to drop down when it's not stuck but when it is stuck it it's there well that's the vehicle basically done and I got as far as just needing to put like a sh some sheets on the back panel I'm not gonna buy another box 
and I probably won't bother with that back panel. Maybe if we've got some at work, I'll just get a couple of sheets and stick it directly to the panel just to take the vibration out of it. So when I put the headliner over, it's got some vibration dampening at the back there, but I'm pretty sure the rest of it will kind of help a lot with that anyway. I've added 28 kilos to the vehicle. That is a lot of weight. If you think about it, that, that's the weight of my leisure battery, which is, no, no, my leisure battery is 37 kilos. Actually, it's super heavy, but, um, yeah, basically the leisure batteries come out and I'm going to go with another setup. So one reason why I'm justifying adding this weight to the vehicle is I've ditched that very heavy battery. Um, I'm also going to be removing this cage as well at the back and I've got some other things in mind. So, you know, factoring in the weight of the vehicle is really important before you do this. But there's also some other stuff you probably should know about why I've done this this way, which is actually the wrong way of doing it. So if you're going to consider this product um, and you're going to put a carpet back on the bottom of the Jeep or any vehicle, you do not need to do what I've done. I've gone for pretty much full coverage with a product, even though I've named this video sound deadening, which it does do, you know, in its defense, it does do sound deadening, but it's more of a vibration dampening product than it is a sound deadening product. Silent Coat, really, all you need to do is take one sheet of it, for example, and let's say you have your door. When you put it on the inside of your door, you put one or two sheets on the inside of the door, and that will take the vibration out of that large, flat piece of metal. And that's really where it, what these sort of sticky um, vibration dampening products are supposed to be doing. You know, you only really need to put some squares on the roof in various locations, maybe a few squares on the floor pan and everything else. And, and that will probably do, that will do a tremendous amount for taking out that vibration from that sheet of metal. The way I've done it is I've used it like a sound deadener and I've put it everywhere and I've put it on the roof to almost trying to get full coverage, which is the wrong way to use the product really. And you end up putting a lot more weight in the vehicle and spending more money. But the reason I've done it that way is because I don't intend to put a carpet back in the vehicle and also I live in a very cold climate. So what I'm sort of doing is using a product for vibration dampening that also will help deaden sound, but I'm using it as a coating to kind of reflect heat um, and you know make the inside more comfortable. So you've got this reflective layer on the roof now, which is going to quieten the roof down a tremendous amount, as you can probably hear from when I'm knocking on it but it's also gonna reflect some of the heat in. It's gonna be cooler inside the vehicle as well in the summer too. Now I will probably put a layer of foam on the roof, just a very, very thin layer, you know, just a couple of mil, just to make it look nicer. I won't be doing anything on the floor, apart from chucking in these mats. These are like, I call them rugged, rigid mats, but they're just copies. These are outland mats. I just throw these in, um, they sit on top of the sound deadening um, or vibration dampening coating, the, the silent coat. Um, and they just sit there and, and when they get full of mud and snow and stuff, I just take them out, give them a kick, pressure wash them, and I throw them back in. So I'm not putting a carpet, whoop, sorry. I'm not putting a carpet back in the vehicle. And because of that, that's why I've done it the way I've done it. So do your research. If you are gonna put a carpet in, you don't need to do that. You're better off kind of using some like foam with vinyl on the back of it if you really want to do some proper sound deadening. But I'm going to get inside the vehicle now anyway. I'm going to start it up, take the camera with me, see how it sounds. Hopefully it isn't a complete waste of money and time. How am I going to put my foot on the clutch like that? All right. Oh, sorry, I've got a kill switch. Turn that on. Wow, it actually sounds a ton better in here. Yeah, it's made a big difference. It's made a really, really big difference. Um, yeah, just really really just taking the edge off it quite quite a lot actually so uh, yeah well it's done the job um, I guess I just got to see how it is when I can actually drive it if 
I've got to wait for the turbo. I don't want to run that too long. It's stink the whole garage out. I've got to wait for the turbo. So, um, yeah. Well, that's another job done on the Jeep. Flipping heck. It was a bit of a mission, that one. Just to give you an idea, actually, of how loud it is. just coming out of there because you, you got to remember this thing doesn't have an exhaust on it at the moment it's just coming straight out of the manifold so that's kind of why it sounds a bit demented but anyway I well, hopefully that's a mission success so now that the interior is in place you can kind of see what it's like with the salt the, the silent coat obviously the roof is you know totally exposed and like you could probably cook a flipping hamburger in this thing it's like a microwave it's like the Spudnik Explorer, <laughs> but it has worked. Um, listen to that. It's really decent. So, you know, it's really designed just to take um, the vibration out of stuff rather than be a true sound deadener, but it is going to help, obviously, and it's going to quieten things down a bit. But you can obviously see the arches. Um, I've got my mats in place. These are just chucking mats. They're designed to be removable. I wanted it like this because I want it as like a functional kind of a vehicle for me, like off-road, you know, utilitarian vehicle. So, you know, stuff can just kind of go in here. I can take it out, I can jet wash it and, and mop out any water that made, made it past. But, you know, with these in place, it's not really too bad. Underneath the rear seats, um, I've just put a couple of bits of removable foam, mainly because you can see I've cut the bottoms of the seats out. You've got two ammunition crates in there, one with spare parts, one's a toolkit. As I've shown before in other videos, when stuff's broken and I've had to repair it. And having that bit of foam there, just it just takes the edge off metal against metal and uh, yeah, saves the paint, but also cuts down on the noise, which is the main thing. I get asked all the time about these rear seats and where they're from and are they from a ZJ? Uh, these are just the standard European export seats that came with the XJ. Um, I've got a couple of sets of them and, and basically XJ's, uh, yeah, like the Sport model I think came with these, I, I don't know, some, some of the models came with them, the limited edition one or whatever came with these um, in Europe. And I guess what you've got to think about is like Jeep's an American brand, They're en they wanted to enter Europe and, and sell the Cherokee in Europe. Um, so they're kind of going up against already established brands that are in Europe like Land Rover and other such brands that are already there. So they, they've obviously decked it out with leather seats to kind of make it more, more appealing. Driver's side, put a little bit of foam underneath there. Um, and that is just because I like to put stuff under there and I kind of want it clamped down and not making much noise. And as I said, this stuff cuts your hands up. So having that there means I know I'm not gonna chop my fingers up, but got the mat in there as well. See, it's just sitting on um, that stuff there that I keep calling um, Dynamat and it's actually not but um, yeah I mean the inside again the, these are yeah, I mean, I've got so much work to do on this thing that the, these seats have uh, have kind of had their day really and you can see on the passenger side again just got the, the mat you can obviously see a bit of this stuff here I mean that might bother some people it doesn't really bother me I guess in the long run I'll find a solution for it if it really does bother me I think it's going to take me a really long time to, to get the interior sorted. Obviously a few or three or four videos back I built these, the gull wing windows. Um, and the idea was that uh, I would have a box maybe of about, you know, let's say four inches of depth behind that. An aluminium box that was kind of riveted or connected somehow to, to the frame of the vehicle, to the body. And in there would be like one side a recovery kit, the other side a tool kit or, you know, whatever you want really, like basically just shiny stuff. So when I'm out traveling, I could just open it up and, ah, shinies, you know, and just kind of pass the time. But I haven't got round to that yet. And um, the back of this vehicle is kind of the next big thing for me. When it comes to traveling, I think this is the most important part of the vehicle. 
and it isn't really that big. So you've got to be clever about it. I used to have a draw system some time ago and that functioned really well when we traveled long term. Um, but then we started to do little day trips and obviously we, we, we've had a, a son, you know, stuff changes and um, you know, you've got to kind of adapt. So I've got quite a lot to do in the back here. I've got this cage thing, which I kind of knocked up from some dog cages and stuff last year. And that functioned pretty well on solo trips. But when it came to like long-term travel, you know, let's say like you're going out for sort of three, four weeks or something, which isn't really long-term travel, is it? But you know, for, for us it is at the moment. It just wasn't good. You know, when you've got stuff on top of stuff, when you then need stuff, you've got to move stuff out of the way to get the stuff. A, a wise man once said. So, <sighs> chat some shit, but basically, that's the problem, you know, it's organization. And, and I've really, I just want that turbo and I just want the Jeep running and working so I can know it's functioning, know I've got everything forward of this back done and, and just get this reversed in and start working on this, you know. But anyway, that's it from me in this video. I and mean, it was obviously mostly about putting in the vibration dampening and the sound deadening in, but I wanted to show you what the vehicle looked like afterwards. From, from a perspective of someone who doesn't run any carpets and just runs mats. Obviously the foam on the roof is gonna make it look a lot better too and probably help with insulation and everything else. But um, like I said before, if you're gonna be in a country where you, know, you don't have to worry about water and stuff and it's really dry, I'd just chuck the carpet back in and, and not use so much of that stuff, just put a few sheets of it here and there just to take the, the resonation, the, the vibration out, out of the sheet metal, I like the doors and such. Um, and there are way better products out there that you can use for sound deadening but for the time being that's going to work for me and progressively I will now start to look at foams and things and see if I can get a roll of it with some spray can 3M glue and I will begin to kind of dress up the inside a little bit and uh, you know make it less shiny which pretty upset about that but I wanted to just show you a little bit of what I'm doing on the inside too uh, just so you get an idea of that. If you've got any questions or you have any suggestions for videos, maybe you want, um, you know, to see some other stuff, then, uh, yeah, you can let me know and I'll see if I can squeeze it in. But on the cards next is um, going to be that turbo and then I'm going to test drive it and then I'm re-gearing the whole vehicle and uh, probably going to lower it a little bit and, um, yeah, do a little bit of stuff like that. And then, you know, whilst I'm doing all that, I'll be building that back end up and seeing whether I can get some sort of like livable camping organization space done um, so that we're kind of on track for the spring um, to get back out. So, um, you know, thanks again for watching. See you very soon. Take care.